Hello, everybody. This is Justin J. Lolo and Hagen. Thank you for tuning in to the J. Lowdown post-CNN Republican presidential nomination debate wrap-up. Woo, that's a mouthful. I'm going to be giving you all of my opinions of the presidential debate uh, that just went on on CNN. And uh, as always, you can comment underneath this video. And who knows, your comments could show up in a future J. Lo Down blog or on the radio show because I'm definitely going to be talking about this this Wednesday from 7 to 8 on the J. Lo Down radio show on WVCW.org. That being said, so CNN did a very premature but smart ratings-wise thing and had all of the candidates who are currently attempting to seek the nomination, maybe, sort of, kind of, and then there's some that are actually doing it, on stage to debate one another on everything from the economy to social issues to jobs to everything, basically, a president would have to deal with, especially uh, President Obama. There was a ton of Obama bashing going on on um, the stage. And now, I understand why they did this, though, because this is the Republican debate, and they're trying to pander to the base. So there was a whole ton of things being said back and forth about Obama and his horrible policies and Joe Biden's horrible policies and everything that has gone on. They took on everything. Now, the first half of the debate Really, uh, well, first, let me tell you who was on there. We had um, Mitt Romney, Tim Pawlenty, Newt Gingrich, Michelle Bachman, Herman Cain, Rick Santorum, and Ron Paul. Now, the first, I would say, I would say a good 65% of the debate was based on the economy, which is a very important issue. The one thing that struck me, though, and I, I, I find this about Republicans as well as Democrats, that they always say what they want to do once they get into office, but they don't realize that they um, need congressional support. So a lot of people said, oh, we need to we need to have allowed these companies that Obama bailed out, like the auto industry and uh, the banking industry, they needed to go through bankruptcy and not have gotten government support. Now, if that was to happen, our economy would have taken an even bigger hit than it already had. Now, the one thing I will say that I agree with the Republicans are that we probably would have been in better shape long-term having had these industries receive to go through the bankruptcy. But at the same time, I understand Obama's position that we needed to bail them out currently so that our economy doesn't tank even further. So it was a lot on the economy. They talked about restructuring of Medicare, which also you really do need presidential support. Now, I disagreed with a lot of what they said. I thought it was bad economic policy. But the one thing I will say is that they articulated their messages fairly well. And I really enjoyed CNN's uh, debater, John... Oh, gosh, what's his last name? I kept calling him John in my tweets. All right, let me double-check this. John debate. John King, excuse me. John King, yes. John King was uh, the, re, uh, the uh, moderator, and whenever he felt that they were either going over time which he had to say this a lot in the beginning. He kind of backed off towards the end because he realized that they weren't going to listen. He would call them out on it, and uh, they uh, and he would ask them to to uh, to answer the actual question instead of you know just citing what they want to do. But I want to give you a, just a little quick rundown of uh, how I thought each candidate did. Now, Mitt Romney, I thought Mitt Romney came across really strong. First of all, he did a great job pandering to the Republican base. He called out Obama on several things. He uh, distanced himself from the uh, Obamacare health care bill, which many Republicans and people have a problem with. That's a big issue going into this 2012 election. And 
Uh, the reason he had to distance himself is that he enacted a similar measure over in Massachusetts called, uh, it was nicknamed Romney Care, but basically an all-encompassing health care bill. Bit similar to the one that Obama instituted. And now everyone was having a problem with this. He distanced himself. He said that this was a different bill, that this was not like Obama's bill. Obama never even called him on this. Um, and basically just trying to distance himself. Now, let's go. Tim Pawlenty. Now, Tim Pawlenty is, uh, could not catch a, a break. Basically, John King really went in on him hard co concerning him commenting on Romney's health care bill in Massachusetts, calling it, Ob when comparing the two, calling Obama Romney care, basically saying that there was actually very little difference between the two. And John King of CNN, who did a great job moderating it, saying, said, well, do you stand by your statement? And he kind of skirted around the issue, really didn't answer it directly, but basically, John King, in essence, said, listen, why are you being so unforthcoming here, but you were so forthcoming on the Sunday talk radio shows concerning this, and when your opponent's standing right here, opponent for the Republican nomination, rather, when he, he's standing right here, you don't use the same terminology, Obama Romney care, uh, R Obama Romney, I don't know, basically, Obama Romney care, I guess, I don't know, it, it was phrased differently, differently, um, and in essence, he, he just kind of skirted the issue, uh, so I don't think he performed very well in the debate, a lot of people are not giving him very good chances because he doesn't have as big of a name recognition as, let's say, Mitt Romney or, uh, Sarah Palin, who wasn't even there. I thought that was shocking. Not shocking, but surprising. Wouldn't it be interesting if Sarah Palin decides to enter into the race? Now, it's still early, so she still has a good opportunity to enter in the race, um, but CNN's holded, held this debate a year and a half before election, so she has a lot of time, but it would be funny to me that if she got the nomination, she wasn't even at the debate, because then this debate would essentially not mean anything, because she didn't get the nomination. Uh, I mean, she wasn't there. Uh, somebody else could have gotten the nomination. All right, let's go. Newt Gingrich. Now, I'm going to tell you about Newt Gingrich. Now, Newt Gingrich has been absent from political life for 14 years. He hasn't changed. He is still using fear-based arguments, and that was basically his whole debate strategy. On illegal immigration, he said these people that, you know, these people need to, we need to find a common solution. We need to, well, no, not on immigration. Well, he said that on immigration, but I'm getting confused. He used fear base like, uh, health care and social security and really tried to drive home that unless something is done, then these problems are going to continue to plague America and Newt Gingrich is the one to solve them. Also, he, the whole economy thing, all of them, but especially Newt Gingrich, really harped on increasing the private sector jobs. Now, I believe that's one of the ways to stimulate the economy. I don't believe that's the only way. But if I was just a regular person who didn't know anything about the economy, just solely watching this debate, I would figure that that was the only way to solve this economy. Not, you know, government jobs. Not, you know, giving people more incentive to hire people. I... It, and, and they keep talking about how they wanted to give tax breaks to the businesses, but it's the same thing, that it hasn't stopped. But basically, my point is that Newt Gingrich has bas basically used fear tactics throughout the entire debate. And fear is a powerful tool. We've seen that in Nazi Germany. We've seen that in, um, you know, communist Russia. We've seen that recently in, the, in Afghanistan with the Taliban. Fear is a tool that can be utilized to get support. So we're going to see if the American people are going to buy into Newt Gingrich's fear. Um, and I'm not comparing him to a Nazi at all. I'm just saying that the concept of fear applies here. So that was my opinion on Newt Gingrich. I thought he used a lot of fear-based arguments. 
Uh, Herman Cain. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who the heck is Herman Cain? Herman Cain is the former CEO of Godfather Pizza. And he started out this debate, I thought, with a very interesting message. He said, look, I'm not a politician. I'm a problem solver. And I'm here to solve America's problems. Good message. I would vote for that just based on that. But then he went on, and then he, I, I kind of liked him. And then he said something. He said that he would feel uncomfortable appointing a Muslim to his cabinet. Now, and then he tried to recant, and then it just it just didn't reflect well for him because he was kind of talking out of both sides of his mouth, saying that it, that doesn't mean he wouldn't appoint one, but he would feel uncomfortable. The president is going to have to deal with Muslims, Jews, Christians, every sort of religion around the world when you're talking about foreign policy. And although that, although that was not a direct foreign policy-based question, I would feel that if you are the president of the United States, you need to support all people for who they are because you're going to be dealing with them for the next at least four years if you are elected. Um, so... That was my take on that. By the way, I, he has really no chance to get um, the nomination, in my opinion. He he was re he was okay in the debate, but he really he didn't do anything stellar. And it's very hard to go up against Mitt Romney to get the Republican nomination. So, Ron Paul. Ron Paul has changed nothing since two thousand eight. If you were a Ron Paul supporter in two thousand eight, you can rest. Be assured that you're going to be a Ron Paul supporter in 2012. He is not for government doing anything. People are responsible for themselves and not for government interfering at all. He's not going to get the nomination. Just saying. And it was just interesting. I don't know. Maybe it was his age, but I just kept picturing this image in my head of a grandfather up at the podium just complaining about everything. You know, back in my day, we had to hike a hill in the snow both ways, barefoot. So, that was my take on him. Um, Rick Santorum. Rick Santorum basically lied the last part of the debate, and I want to call him out on it. He said that Obama had no, essentially no, foreign policy, and that we're not getting the respect we deserve from our allies. Does anybody remember when George Bush was in office, a Republican, and he was so concentrated on trying to police, basically, the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq, he was involved in Israel, I believe, that our allies basically turned to him and said, look, we're out. Britain eventually pulled out of the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan their troops, even though we're tight allies with them. Because basically they disagreed with the policy that George Bush was doing. And he also said that Obama had no foreign policy. Excuse me, have we been attacked in these last four years? No. We haven't been attacked directly. There have been attempts. There have absolutely been attempts. But the United States has not been attacked. Obama has kept us safe. Just like George Bush kept us safe post-9-11, Obama has kept us safe and killed Osama bin Laden, something George Bush couldn't claim. So to say that President Obama has had no foreign policy is a lie. And basically, he's a very, very, very conservative person. I don't think he's going to get the nomination. I have saved Michelle Bachman for last, and let me tell you why. She really surprised me. Her debate strategy was brilliant. She started off the debate saying that, announcing that she is running for the President of the United States. She started off the debate doing that, which I thought gave her tremendous momentum going into it, starting with the big announcement, and then, you know, explaining her points of why she wants to do that, why she wants to be president. I thought she came out very articulate and very well, and I thought that she made her points. I disagreed with all of them, but she made her points really well. That being said, there was one <laughs> misstep, which was... One of the final questions they asked the candidates, 
if you could only include one person on this stage in your cabinet, who would it be, and why, and what would you have them do it? All of them gave politically correct answers, and every no one named a name, which I didn't expect them to, but nobody named a name because they were all trying to be nice-nice to everybody. And Michelle Bachman said, I would have an American Idol-like contest. An attempt at humor, but really, Michelle? Really? So... Anyways, that, those were my opinions on the debate and all the candidates. We are going to be talking about this, like I said, on the J-Lo Down Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. I could go on and on about this. Um, please send me your comments under this. I am looking forward to hearing them and judging what you, and hearing what you have to say. So, thank you for tuning into the J-Lo Down vlog. Be sure to tune in Wednesday, 7 to 8, and tomorrow when I do a new vlog. So... Yeah, that's all. Good night, guys.